you know, you guys have had very strong conviction about uh, robotaxi. I can see why now it, yeah. it's going up, but it goes against what most people, right? Many people just can't believe that this is going to happen. Yeah. So when you guys are investing in disruptive innovation, this is one. How do you do your time frames, though? How do you know that this mm -hmm. is going to be 2024 versus 2026 uh, or even longer? Yeah, well, I mean, to, you know, the, the first piece of what you said, most people don't believe this. I, I think that this is one of those things where um, no one's going to believe it unless it's kind yeah. of hitting them in the face and it's it's here. It's it, So I think I think belief will be suspended until that point from the vast majority for, for the vast majority of people out there. Yeah. And I mean, same thing with autonomous driving. Like I still see articles that say, oh, we were promised robo taxis and they're not here. It's like, well, actually they are. They're just in, you know, they're in certain cities. Not everyone has access to them. Um, you know, so for our model, uh, and if this is available on GitHub for anyone to download, uh, we, we run through, it's a Monte Carlo analysis of, um, you know, a, a number of different variables. And so, uh, the way that we basically, um, we, we set, you know, what we think are the right parameters. So for robo taxi, you know, there's the, there's a possibility for it to start you know, as early as the end of this year, that's the earliest possible point that we have in the model. Um, that would be like in line with the more aggressive statements that Tesla uh, makes themselves about uh, full autonomy. Or, you know, you could push that start date out to something like 2030. Um, and uh, basically we, you know, it, it runs 5,000 plus times um, with all of our inputs. And that's kind of where the expected values coming from. So, uh, you know, the exact timing, I think the right way to think about it is, do you think that it'll happen in the next five years? And, uh, you know, ARC is of the opinion that yes, that is possible. And then in that case, it should be factored in to the valuation. And, you know, if you don't think it'll happen in 2024, as, as we expect, well, then, you know, slide your input over to 2026 and see, see how much it affects the valuation. So, um, this is, you know, it's a, it's a combination of Tesla's pu public statements, um, you know, our own conservatism. Again, we're a little bit more conservative than the company themselves and, and how long it'll take to get there. Um, plus all of the videos that we see online of, of users and AI progress. Um, and, you know, we didn't talk about it yet, but I, I think that one other piece of evidence that gives me confidence is the users that have disabled the wheel nag that drive their cars and yeah. And there's like a couple of really impressive videos in San Francisco where it, the, it basically performs a full ride hail ride, right? Um, you know, it's they're picking someone up in an Uber on their phone, and um, from start to finish, I think they 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 touch the wheel at the very beginning and the very end. But um, you know, those seem like solvable situations where you're going to a parking lot or pulling over to the side of the road. Um, so while autopilot still is messing up. And that's like the best case example. It kind of gives you this idea, like, is it possible in certain scenarios? Yeah, it already seems possible today in that one area of San Francisco, right? So that's what gives us confidence about that year timeframe. That's a very good point. I mean, I think very few people realize that um, FSD beta reacts differently in different locations. And I think mm -hmm. that Tesla has already confirmed that if you have more Teslas, if you have more Teslas with FSD, uh, reporting in that specific area and San Francisco, California, that's uh, it's overfit for that. That's why we do see exactly. videos of people who are testing it there do really well. But then the people who are testing in Chicago or rural towns, they're going, right. you know, it's blowing past this stop sign. That's because it might be mislabeled on the maps. It might be that, uh, you know, and I think purposely, you, you, it's kind of weird, but I've been thinking this way that uh, Tesla purposely is uh, optimizing for vision and labeling mm -hmm. like they want it that every single ride is as if it's brand new to see how the car will learn that particular ride then eventually they add in the memory which is all the cars driving through it they already know what it is they've mapped it out this general world model and then from there on uh, when they turn that on uh, then it becomes much more less likely to make a mistake but right now they're optimizing for vision like as if it's brand new for them um but yeah this concept of geolocation so walk me through you know, step by step, how do you see Tesla, the steps right now? So FSD beta 11.4.4, it's mm -hmm. now, anybody can download it and access it. Uh, it's still supervised driving. What's the next step? What's the next step? And then compare that uh, to what Waymo and Cruise 
And then I don't know if you also can talk about the Chinese companies, how they, how you see they're going to go uh, about this and how they differ. And some people are saying that this is something that other car companies will eventually copy or their head or their same pace and eventually both yeah. come at the same time. Can you address that? So first is the time frame exactly step okay. by step how it works. Mm-hmm. And then secondly, compare it to the competitors. Yeah. Um, so, you know, step by step. I think, I think that, right, we've heard that, you know, the version 12 won't be beta. What, what, do, you mean, what in, do you think he means by that? Yeah. yeah. I'm interpreting that that is really close to, if, if not the point at which, well, you can think, you can think that first, so they're going to do this really carefully, which I think is smart. You know, other automakers have systems where you can already take your hands off the wheel and drive your car, but that's because it's constrained to only on the highway. Um, so I think I think Tesla's going to be really careful to you know and you know abide by what NHTSA would like to see uh, before they make that possible. But that's like the next major step for me. So someone being able to you know you the average driver right being able to just um, disable the wheel nag, take their take their hands off. Um, some people again, as we've seen, are already doing that. Um, but uh, for that to just be like a feature that's rolled out and approved, um, I I do think that you know at that point there's probably going to be some you're, you're you know then then you imagine like the next step is okay well I don't have to have my eyes on the road all the time um, exactly when that's going to happen like in this time period uh, you know I, I'm not sure right but I I think could it happen in the next year. It seems like it from the progress that we've seen. Um, I mean, the stuff that Tesla doesn't really talk about as much is then actually like bootstrapping the ride hill network. So they already have the capability to do that. I mean, they have this immense set of driving data. You know, they have people that are, it's probably, you know, you can imagine it's like you as Tesla that's getting getting data back from these vehicles. You, you likely know which ones are being used as ride hail cars just on the utilization rate alone. They're probably driving way more than the average driver in like specific, you know, one specific cities, like frequent uh, drop off, pick up up points. So they already have like navigation and route data there. It's more just like, okay, well, you know, how are they going to actually roll out an app and make this available to consumers? Um, and I do think they're prioritizing crossing the line to full autonomy before, um, that gets rolled out. Uh, I think that that's also a smart decision because I think that solving for full autonomy is the more difficult piece of the puzzle versus, you know, launching like their version of Uber. I'm not saying that's easy to do. I'm, I'm just saying that the um, the latter is is more, or the former, sorry, is, is more difficult. Um, so, so those are kind of like the rough steps that I expect. And I think you're right. Like I could easily see this happening in a place like California where, um, you know, they, they know it's a trusted service. There's a lot of Teslas there and uh, it, it works really well right now. What about um, some people think that uh, the day that they will uh, know that this is actually going to happen is when Tesla decides to say that uh, insurance, we basically are taking liability for this drive. Is that part of your thinking at all that that might even happen? Yeah, I, ex- I mean, I would expect them to do that once you are able to take your eyes off the road. Um, then, then the computer has to be at fault. Uh, you know, they're already setting up insurance, uh, that, that seems to be a fairly complex approval process state to state. So I think they're probably going as fast as they can there. But, um, yeah, I do expect the insurance platform, uh, to eventually cover the computer liability in the future. Um, that said, I also think that, uh, the cost to do so will be, less expensive than there'll be a premium for, uh, you know, a car that's heavily utilized, like a ride hail vehicle today, like ride hail insurance, but the accident rate, I think will be lower. I've modeled that I expect it to be roughly 80%, um, more than 80%, uh, lower on a, and an accident like per X amount of miles basis. Um, and that's looking at how autopilot and planes was first introduced and how those, um, you know, the complexity and the accident rate came down, uh, subsequently. So, um, but, but yeah, I, I do expect that to be, um, you know, a part of that Tesla verticalization puzzle that they're putting together. Do you, do you think it's going to be Tesla owned cars, Tesla ride hail service, or are they going to actually let consumers like me who own my Tesla as promised to be able to then rent it out? 
as part of their service or is it yeah. going to be just first controlled with their cars, their service first or how, how might that roll out? Given Tesla's history, I expect them to do this, to do it themselves first. Uh, so we need, again, we know that they can take, um, cars that are coming off of lease that don't have the option for the customer to buy them. Um, of course they can take cars off the production line if they felt like that was the right decision to do given, you know, customer demand and all those things at the moment. Um, I do think that they will, it, it seems like there's, um, there's going to be the possibility for, for owner. I think there could be the possibility for owners to put their cars on the Red Hill network. I do think that that's probably going to be the more, uh, rare of the two. I think it's it's more of a fleet model that Tesla will first own its itself, but then like further down the road, like in the next five to 10 years, I expect them to have a fleet partner that houses and maintains these vehicles. Like, I don't think it makes sense for them to hold all of these cars on their balance sheet necessarily, but they're going to want to bootstrap it and set it up themselves because that's what they do with, with, you know, most of their new projects, right? They try to do as much as they can internally. Right. And do you think that they'll be able to, do, you were saying the cars on lease, but that would might have hardware three, right? Wouldn't they optimize for hardware four when you roll it out? Just make sure you got the best tech or do you think that it, it, hardware three can do this? Yeah, I think that uh, the way that it'll work is it, yeah, it, it'll be, it'll be okay. So I, I picture it to first the, um, you can imagine that the first, that's a good point. The first vehicles on the network could be the latest generation hardware, but I expect over time for it to, to, for them to be able to outfit, fit even earlier generations with FSD capability. Like the, you know, the statement that they made, okay, every car produced past this point, you know, some like, what was it now? It was the 2016 announcement that they made. Um, I do expect all of those car, you know, I expect mm -hmm. them to sort of fulfill that promise either through, you know, the the swappable uh, Tesla chip in the car solution because uh, they did they did upgrade the the in car computer, um, or through you know kind of just like the network getting better and like as we talked about before, if it's so generalizable that you can train it from a YouTube model now, I imagine that like you know, once they perfect that piece of it, which is probably not going to be in this first iteration, first release, that then it'll, it'll start moving backwards to sort of earlier generation vehicles. If that makes sense. Yeah. I was, I was really still uh, shocked that Ashok <laughs> said, said that he is, is planning, they're planning to roll this out. He paused for a long time. Then he said, I think by later this year, <laughs> and I was like, Whoa, it's already middle June. And this is a shock saying this, you know? Yeah. Uh, so it's like, okay, this means that they've been playing with it. They've been using it. You heard Elon say that the uh, dojo has already been, like they, you know, it says uh, in production July, but he said, well, we've actually already started using it. So it feels like they have actual data or knowledge that this is maybe further along than, you know, that they're a little bit more confident, but conjecture. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, Elon always sounds more confident than ever, um, you know, so I, I think, you know, to your point for someone from the engineering team to say that, you know, maybe, maybe yeah. that is, is really exciting, but like, I would also say if it doesn't happen by the end of the year, right. you know, I, I, people, this is, this is the type of thing again, where I like to think of it as, is it going to happen in the next five years? Like, is it something I as an investor should think about? And then in, in that case, okay, yes, it's really interesting, but if it's like a six month delay, I, I don't think that should be as, as critical to this type of story, like the exponential growth story. 